In this video, we're going to be doing a naturally fermented ginger beer. We're going to be making a ginger bug, and then we're going to proceed to make the actual ginger beer itself. Can't wait to get started. Hi, I'm Charles, and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. As always, if you like what you see here, please click on the subscribe and notify buttons, and I will do one of these once a week. Okay, the very first thing we need to do is we need to start our ginger bug. And the way we do that is that we start out by taking about uh, two tablespoons of uh, grated ginger. Skin it off. about half a teaspoon of it's on the table. That's okay. All right, about two tablespoons. No need to be totally precise. Go ahead and uh, put that into our, uh, our glass jar. I'm gonna add about uh, two tablespoons of sugar. Again, about two tablespoons of sugar. No need to be precise. Yeah, just gonna save side two and a half. Out the way. Next thing we want to do is add about cup and a half, cup, cup and a half of water. Give that a bit of a stir. thing we want to do is go ahead and give that a cover. Mm. That will do it. And that's uh, the start. Uh, every day for the next two to three days, we're going to come back and we're going to grate another uh, another tablespoon or two of, uh, of ginger and another uh, tablespoon or two of, uh, of sugar, give it a stir. And uh, after any about two, again, two to three days, we should have the makings of a good, uh, a good starter for our, our ginger brew that we'll proceed with after this. Okay, now that our ginger bug is done, the next thing we need to do is to uh, rough chop our ginger. Now, I like my ginger strong, or ginger ale strong, so I'm assuming my ginger beer is going to be the same way. So I'm going to use this much ginger. I mean, again, it's up to personal preferences. You can use as, as much or as, as little ginger as you, as you prefer, but again, it's my first time making it, so I'm going to go for a nice strong flavor. So let's, uh, let's start chopping.
All right, let's uh, add about a cup of water to this to help make the uh, mixing a little bit a lot easier. That's more than enough. We're gonna let's put a cap on it and let's uh, blend it up. All right, now if that's done, we want to go ahead and uh, finish adding the rest of our gallon of water into a nice big pot. And then we're going to add our ginger to that. And we're going to make uh, basically just a ginger tea. We're going to bring it to boiling, uh, then uh, reduce the heat to let it simmer for a good five to seven minutes, then uh, let it come to room temperature. All right, let's bring this to a boil. Okay, now that it's been boiling for 15 minutes, we're gonna turn the heat down to, to a low simmer. And as soon as the temperature comes down, we're going to, uh, we're going to add our sugar. Several minutes, we're now gonna add our two and a half cups of sugar. Now again, the amount of sugar you use depends personally on your own preference. If you like it a little bit sweeter, add a little bit more. If you, if you don't like it as, as sweet, add, add a little bit less. Same way with your amount of ginger, as I said earlier. If you don't like it, uh, if you don't like it very gingery, less ginger. Uh, once we got that dissolved, we can go ahead and take this off the heat, or rather turn the heat off, and let it come down to room temperature. Once it's come down in room temperature, we're going to go ahead and uh, juice uh, three lemons. Again, the amount of lemons you use is up to your own personal preference. If you wanted to add special spices like aniseed or pepper or, or cloves, I mean, uh, that would be a good time to drop them in. But uh, again, first time making it uh, is going to be the first time we're going to try using the same basic recipe. See how it turns out. Let's go ahead and juice these lemons real quick. Now if the ginger mixture is cooled down to uh, room temperature, we can go ahead and begin straining it. If you have a fine mesh strainer, that'd be fine. I've got a strainer, but I've also got a fine mesh straining bag, which is what I'm gonna use. Of course, if I had an assistant holding this, I could just pour it straight from the pot, but gotta make do with what you got. Nope. 
Alright. See so if we can squeeze out every nice little bit of gingerness we can out of this uh, remaining pulp. Okay, that's that. Now let's go ahead and add our lemon juice at this point. Go ahead and strain that, no point in getting any seeds in there. And now we can add our ginger bug. We don't need all of it. We only need like uh, anywhere from a quarter to half a cup uh, just to get it started. Uh, yeast will multiply once it's been added to the added to the ginger beer mixture. But let's go ahead and get that started. Uh, no need to measure it. No need to be precise. But I think I am going to strain it just to make sure that nothing gets in there. Add about. Yay much, which is actually more than I need, but we'll definitely get the job done. Now all we have to do at this point, after giving it a little stir, is to uh, start pouring it in our bottles. Okay, that's that. I made sure to leave uh, a rather generous uh, headspace so that there'll be plenty of room for uh, carbonation to, uh, to, to expand, if need be, without uh, bubbling over. So all I really need to do, really, at this point, is to just finish up filling the rest of the bottles. And uh, from there, we'll put the uh, bottles aside the caps on uh, the counter somewhere and let fermentation do its thing once a day we want to come by and check them and uh, burp the bottles so that uh, we do not run the risk of uh, pressure exploding the bottles even though these are fermentation grade bottles you never know so again once a day just come by and uh, just loosen the cap for a hot second, put it back on, come back and check it the next day. Uh, after about two or three days, we put these in the refrigerator, boom, let them get cold, check it out. Okay, it's been three days since we started to let our ginger beer ferment. Uh, it's now been in the refrigerator since uh, this morning, so it's been several hours ago. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, give it a taste and uh, see how it turned out. A couple of things to note, however, is that one, uh, there is a layer of sediment along the bottom of the uh, of the uh, bottle. Uh, don't know how that's going to affect things. I think an easier way of solving that. Whoa! <laughs> I didn't expect that much. <laughs> All right, so it's definitely not carbonated. All right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and give it a pour. All right, can't argue with that. It's looking good. It, uh, it tastes like uh, Canada dry ginger ale. I was shooting for Verner's, 
but uh, ended up with Canada Dry, which is not too bad. I think next time, probably, uh, uh, in order to handle this sediment that, that builds up on the bottom, that will break loose and float around a bit, is that uh, before I bottle it, I'll probably just let it settle in the, uh, in the container or the pot or the pan, so that a lot of this will just go ahead and settle out naturally. Uh, so that I won't have this much of it <laughs> at the bottom of the uh, bottle. But uh, taste-wise, probably cut back on the ginger just a little bit. And maybe on the sugar also just a little bit. So instead of two and a half cups of uh, sugar, probably two and a quarter. Uh, and about mm, maybe a quarter less ginger. But otherwise, I mean, this is not bad. This is, this is, this is not bad at all. Yeah, not bad at all.